Every unit in Battle Cats contains values within them that defines them in battle, such as their attack power, attack speed, health point, movement speed, abilities, cooldown, you name it. Each of these easily defines a unit in battle, and pretty much all of them are always the hot topic when talking about certain units. However, there is a certain stats in a unit that's pretty much never really talked about and is only noticeable if you actually try to focus on it. This stats doesn't actually ever matter to a unit's performance, and yet can actually impact the gameplay in a way if this is not set up properly. This is unit layering. Unit layering is a really simple concept, but it is even easier to explain in action. Take a clip of this huge stack of lollycats in the background for example. Now compare it to this clip of this huge stack of Hyper Mister. You notice the difference, don't you? That's right, while Lollicat is destroying the enemy base normally, Hyper Mister is most likely violating some sort of Geneva conventions from this kind of pixel bullying. Okay, that's not it. I'm talking about how visually you can kind of differentiate the different Hyper Misters that are stacked up from their slightly different positions from each other. Meanwhile, the multiple Lollicats somehow just magically merge into one visually. I'm sure it already clicked to many of you by now on what unit layering is just from this information, uh, but I'd like to talk a bit more about this. As you can see, most of the Hyper Mister in this clip are already targeting the base, which means that most of these units are actually standing in the exact same position. However, they are slightly visually different, some appearing slightly in front or behind each other. In the case of Lollicat, however, they kinda just merge into one. This is because Lollicat is locked into a certain layer, while Hyper Mister's layering is varied. Of course, this applies to varying units, so a huge amount of different units mixed up together will still appear some in front or behind each other. Here's another clip, this time of Cat 6 Siege Engine, with Samba Cats. Like I said before, different units will generally still go either in front or behind other units. However, in the case of Siege Engine, as you can see, pretty much all of the Samba Cats always stand in front of Siege. This is also because Siege's layer is locked at the very back. I really don't need to actually explain what layer is anymore, don't I? Perhaps uh, if you never used any image editing software, you might not be familiar with layer or the term of layer, but even then, I think this should be clear enough. Simply put, it's the position in where a unit visually appears in game. For some unit, this can vary in a range between certain layers that is set on the unit or all layers which the game chooses randomly upon spawning. For some other units, they can only spawn in specific layer. In the case of Siege Engine, it's pretty obvious on why this unit is locked in the far back layer. Just look at the size of this mad lad, this machine can fit so many cats in it. Would be a trouble if this unit spawns at the frontmost layer, that's gonna basically make all of your units invisible to your eyes. So why did Lollicat even get locked to a layer? I'll count to 3 for time for you to guess 3, 2, 1, time's up. It's so that the game can do the stupid body legs combination from using legs and parries variant. They lock Paris and Legs variants layers in a way where Paris variants always spawn just slightly in front of Legs variants. That way, if a Legs variant stand at the same position as a Paris variant, they will always visually merge to form one body. This includes Vengeful Cat and her evolutions, Grocho and Kite Cat. Grocho makes the Legs variant look like it's wearing glasses and Kite Cat's kite, replacing the Legs variant's head. It's a dumb little thing, but it's worth pointing out. I'm sure many of you already knew this, but maybe the layering mechanic never crossed your mind. Speaking of, when multiple units appear in the same layer, whichever units are spawned the latest will always take priority in front. This obviously doesn't just apply to cat units. Enemies also has layerings too. However, the way enemies handle layerings are different than cats. Cats' layers are defined on the unit itself. Certain units will always set to spawn in certain range of layers. For enemies, the one that defines the enemy unit's layering are not based on the enemy itself, rather it is based off the stage schematics. If you're unfamiliar with stage schematics, I have a whole video explaining more in depth about it, which is linked in the description if you want to check it out. Uh, please remind me if I happen to forget to link this in the comments. Basically, unit layerings are set in every enemy group instead of what enemies they are. Uh, for example, in Star Ocean, the HNAF boss is set to always spawn at a very high priority layer, while the Dark Doges can spawn in varying layers but always behind the HNAF. However, in Feast of Betrayal, all of the layerings for all the enemies there are random. The HNAS, the Metal Doge, the Wall Doge, all can spawn in any layers, because the stage sets these enemy groups to be able to spawn in any layer. As you'd expect, bigger enemies tend to be placed on a lower priority than other enemies in the stage that are smaller than them. Like Nyandam variants almost always are placed in the backmost layer, while Peon enemies tend to be placed in front. Now, keep note that this can mean that the same type of enemies can be set on a specific different layers, and this information can be used to differentiate the same enemies from each other in the field, which frankly never really came into play, except for Primitive Souls and Zional, at least those are the two that came into my mind. 
Primitive Souls and Ziona both has multiple bosses, which is the same enemy, and differentiating which boss is which can be crucial as you'd want to act differently based on which one is in front and which one is at the back, or if you want to keep track which one has the lower health and which one can be targeted. In the case of both of these stages, the newer boss, or the one that spawned the most recent, is always set to appear in front of the older one. This way you don't always have to keep track of all of the bosses at all time and you can always just look at which one is visually in front or at the back to differentiate them. Again, this information is pretty much almost never used anywhere else, since in most other stages you'd usually just treat all bosses like they're the same and you won't really have any consequences anyways, like for example 445, Minor Dragons, and Cyclone Revenge stages where there are multiple Cyclones. That's pretty much about it for unit layering, honestly. I just wanna make this video because I thought it's a fun little fact and I wanna appreciate something Pono sets up in a game that is rarely talked about. This usually just came across people's mind when trying to make custom stages, and even then some people who create custom stages can sometimes completely ignore this, which sometimes results in a full of awful mess of enemies on top of each other. Still, I think this is a nice thing to talk about and just goes to show how much Ponos cares about visuals in this game, not just in terms of design and animations of units, but also the visuals of the battlefield itself. That's all for now folks, see you guys later. By the way, remember the clip with Siege and Gato Amigo and how I said that all of the Gato Amigo appears in front of Siege? I tricked you. Remember when I said that units that spawns the latest in the same layer will appear in front? Actually, what I didn't show you is that when Siege comes into the existing Gato Amigo, some of the Gato Amigos actually got hit behind Siege. So there's that, your Siege can actually hide some units. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Thought I'd point that out. Thanks, Ponos.